and welcome to this week's episode of The Play Button. Uh, I am your host, GSD, and with me today we have a stacked panel. Extra large edition. Extra yeah. large edition. <laughs> XL. Extra large edition. Whoa. <laughs> um, I'll do introductions. I will start down on the end uh, with Homesick, Fortuna, Sinistar, Hi. and DJ Dash. And yeah, we have a very uh, stacked <laughs> lineup today. And today we're going to talk about where we make music, our studio mm, spaces, yeah, how that differs, how it changes, um, how you can utilize wherever you may be in your life to uh, have a comfy space to make music that's mellow and chill, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Without getting kicked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very important. Part. Yeah, don't get kicked out, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, since we have some new panelists uh, who haven't been on the podcast before, why don't we start with um, a little introduction of yourselves. Homesick, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, let's see. I don't think I've thought about how to answer that question in a long time. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my name's Sean. I go by Homesick. I'm based here in Calgary, Alberta. I was part of uh, the Red Bull Music Academy back in 2015. They sent us all out to Paris to have a good time and get mentored by some of our favorite uh, artists in the dance music world. And uh, now I'm back here just hustling, just trying to trying to make music and uh, doing my thing. Do you guys, I can't see, do, do you, would you guys mind leaning back a little bit? I can't sure. see. I can see Sean's face now, that's perfect. There we okay. go. Yeah. Lean back and um, comfortable. I think I was the only one who wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Shimmy no, here. Yeah. Okay. Hello. <laughs> with, five, with five of us, I think we can just chill. Okay. Right? We can relax. <laughs> okay. Same, deep. same time. <sighs> <sighs> there we go. Oh, sorry. Okay. I missed that. I missed that one. Can we do it again? Okay, perfect. Uh, <laughs> next up with me as always Live is Gabe. Yo. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Gabe. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I'm a pr producer mainly, singer-songwriter, and I've been just playing music uh, in town for a number of years, whether it's been with bands, solo projects, uh, playing keys and stuff like that. So, yeah, nothing too major yet. So. And back once again is Sinistar. Hi. I make music. You probably don't know me, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, uh, That's I'm from. The sickest answer. Yeah, yeah, he's got the best one. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm from uh, Detroit originally, and I reside here now, and I pretty much do this full time. DJ, produce, have a few records out, make travel, podcasts, make podcasts, yeah. do real podcast stuff, <laughs> real MF podcasts. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So yeah, I'm happy to be back. And Liam. Yeah, um, I go by Liam. <laughs> DJ Liam. Um, no, I go by DJ Dine and Dash. Um, just like a DJ here in Calgary, produce music too. Um, background is I started with actually Dan Murray in a band, like two thousand fifteen. Yeah, why don't you talk to the camera? And let yeah, them know. sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was looking for it. Was it two thousand fifteen? Yeah, ish. Yeah. Um, and then from there on, just kind of like did solo stuff. And then recently, just doing production and DJing full time now. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, wow. so, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, cool. Uh, well, thank you guys all for being here today. I'm excited yeah. about this chat personally. Yeah. Um, for us, just so you guys know. Um, Myself and Jeremy and Liam, we share studio space right now, and we're in, in the con, we're in the, the process, sorry, of getting rid of that and moving on to different spaces, all our own spaces. Mm -hmm. So it kind of um, inspired the talk today. Yeah. Um, so, but let's go back. Let's go way back. Mm. Back in the time. Let's go back <laughs> to your mom's house. Yeah. <laughs> and where everybody starts. No matter who you are, yeah. <laughs> the first place everybody makes music is usually at their parents' house. Um, so why don't you guys give me a little bit of a breakdown of each of your parents' houses and what that first space where you were making music was like. Gabe, let's start with you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, wow. Well, I started playing guitar a number of years ago, but it was very casual. That was just in the bedroom back uh, here in Calgary. But when I actually started making electronic music... 
That was in a, a nice house in Cold Lake, Alberta. Cold so, Lake? Yeah. <laughs> it's way, I don't know, past Edmonton. And, uh, okay. yeah, we had just, like, I don't know, nice, spacious house. My parents gave me the big basement room, and uh, they were on the third floor, so there was, like, a floor in between us, so I could make music and not bug them too much. Okay. And uh, I just had a little synthesizer in my computer, so um, that was... And how long were you it. there? Uh, actually, only a year, and then I moved here for university. And did the space so. get to evolve at all? Did it become greater than... Mm, for... A, <laughs> For the first uh, two years of university, it was really just a laptop and a keyboard. Okay. So it was very basic, and I was really like programming with my mouse and not not really like recording yet. You know. Okay. Yeah. It was very basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And Sean, what about you? Uh, yeah, guilty as well. Uh, my parents' basement. I, I wasn't lucky enough to have an extra floor in between oh, yeah. <laughs> my parents and I. Uh, my parents were very supportive, but they only had so much patience. <laughs> yet, so I definitely did uh, upset them quite a few times. But uh, <laughs> um, but I was making music uh, ever since a young age. You know, growing up doing piano lessons and all that. Uh, got into playing guitar for a good ten, twelve years before I discovered drum and bass music, mm -hmm. which, which triggered my fascination with electronic, uh, electronic music, and um, you know, got a copy of FL Studio and just started banging out tunes in my, uh, in my parents' basement, and eventually had to move out, and instead of annoying my parents, <laughs> I found some roommates to annoy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, just, I think, uh, probably about three or four years ago, I made the jump to just get my own house somewhere where I know that I wasn't going to be yeah. getting uh, the police visiting me asking me to turn <laughs> everything down yeah and that's been very important me being able to have a, a space where I can get away with being obnoxious mm -hmm. so that's where I am now I'm, yeah. at, I'm at that place it's a good way to put it being obnoxious like being obnoxious yeah. you gotta be obnoxious yeah, when you're totally. making music you do you ever people... respond to the police like Oh yeah, but like check out this beat I made. It's fire. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand. Right. Like, wait, that. listen to it and then yeah. like tell me to turn it down after. <laughs> right. I'm next up, bro. Listen. <laughs> Liam, what was your uh, first space where you were making music like? Uh, like same thing. Um, I would say it started off in the bedroom, which was beside my parents' bedroom. So that was kind of rough. Mm -hmm. um, so like do it when they're at work or you know just like not as much home um, but during that time I fell I fell really in love with like producing on headphones and I still love producing on headphones because mm. like I think it's so much more affordable over like a long period of time right so you buy like good speakers and that's like it's like 900 bucks right there like if you want really good ones right mm. where you buy like really expensive headphones which would be like $300 so I didn't buy $300 headphones but I had decent headphones um, so I was doing that for a bit and then moved to like in that classic like unfinished basement whole setup where it's like this was still at your parents house I still at my parents place yeah and then like you know it's such a big basement, and I was actually, it was crazy, because I was using, like, PA speakers, oh. which is, like, not the best, but the great thing... <laughs> Definitely okay. not the no, best. No, but the, yeah. great thing, the great thing about it was, was because, like, there, it's such big open space in an unfinished basement that you almost need to turn it, like, way louder, right, to, like, not get reverb and fill the room. So I was allowed to do that because, like, they couldn't hear it, um... And then from there, I moved from like moved out of the place, moved from house to house, and just had like yeah, bedroom studios. Now I have my, like a second bedroom, which I use for a studio. Okay, we're oh, we're gonna studio. we're gonna get into uh, what we're doing now. I just want to finish up yeah. about like uh, first places. So Jeremy, what was your first lab? It's my parents' basement. Mm -hmm. Yes, that seems to be the, the trend here. Yeah, mm -hmm. the basement. There was a floor between. Um, hold on, just don't. <laughs> turning, Dan. Sorry, I'm turning my phone off. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, we'll go back over that. Okay. okay. So, yeah, started in my parents' basement. Um, yeah, 
pretty much uh, the old office desk. That was the old computer desk. Yeah. That was my space, and my dad had his printer there. So at one point in time, that printer became wireless. It was like your dad's office. Well, it was, his, yeah, it was basically like the old desk. Okay. And then for how the, the space was set up, there was a lot of, it was like storage area and stuff. So that almost acted as insulation. And then mm. I started to buy monitors and mm, things like that. Okay. And yeah, I just pretty much worked out of there. And um, yeah, that was interesting for a while. There was like a floor between my parents' uh, bedroom and then the basement. Mm, nice. So yeah, I could be a little bit loud yeah. and obviously louder <laughs> when they were gone. Mm -hmm. Like, so yeah. So what about you? this is kind of what... I, I was expecting, um, you know, it's all kind of the same space mm -hmm. when we're talking about rooms, but what was your setup like? Like what kind of gear did you have and like how did you have to make adjustments because of what you had available to you? Because when we all start out, yeah. your, your, your equipment is limited. Oh, it's, yeah. It's yeah. very limited. So, Sean, you mentioned, I think, or no, sorry, Gabe, you mentioned that you had basically... Oh, yeah, pretty much nothing, a computer... Like an old laptop that I, I got as a gift for like getting close to finishing high school, mm -hmm. and it was like, you know, hey, congrats, here's mm -hmm. a laptop for school, and mm -hmm. I was like, production, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, <laughs> my speakers were these like, you know, they're like music listening gaming speakers yes. that I found at Best Buy. Game for gaming like, speakers from Best Buy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. So you were, you were yeah. on a PA but, system. Yeah. You were on gaming speakers. But I had a, sub, a dedicated subwoofer. So for, I was like, yeah. For when you're playing Doom and you just need that. <laughs> yeah, you need that THX. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doom, Dolby Doom, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty basic. It was, yeah. It was very elementary, so. Sean, what was your setup like did you have you said you were taking piano lessons when you were younger right so did you have already at home a piano or keyboard or something yeah my family inherited a nice stand-up piano that uh <clears throat> excuse me i jammed out on quite a bit uh for production though i remember the, the the first thing i bought was a nice pair of <laughs> a garbage pair of logitech laptop speaker and system it was good. It, yeah. It was, it was good enough. <laughs> I think it was just what I needed. Yeah, something, yeah, like with a little dedicated subwoofer. Yeah, yeah. It was it was what I needed to bang out some tracks. Anyway. You just needed to hear what you were doing. It really, at the beginning, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exactly. matter. Yeah. <laughs> Anything better than your, like, laptop speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. 100%. <laughs> and, and Jeremy, what did you have going on in your dad's office? When it started, uh, I had a tower. It's a $500 tower from Walmart. That was your computer. HP, that was, that was the unit. Mm. Okay. And then, um, yeah, just like your tube monitor or whatever. And then um, Polk Audio speakers. Mm -hmm. and, oh, oh, it started with the HP speakers because it came with a set. And then there were like Polk Audio speakers and those pretty much blew out completely. And then I had, <laughs> um, I found out about a pair of Roland MA8s. It was like tiny oh, yeah. desk ones. And they're actually pretty incredible still. Like yeah. they're you know, if you need like a good reference, like straight away, because um, they had the dedicated subwoofer and all okay. that. It was like the if you go to like a Long McQuaid or mm -hmm. Guitar Center for my people's estates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, One sec, and for everyone who knows, all the dollar amounts we're talking about are in Canadian CDN. dollars. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, those are like uh, those are the ones that people were like. Um, or the stores were using like demo the keyboards and stuff. Yeah. Like they would just set those little ones up so they didn't have to worry about setting up a big PA system and okay. people being loud and obnoxious mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I bought those or I got those actually given to me and then those are my dedicated mondos for a long time. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it sounds like everybody had strange things they had to do. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so what, what, I'm going to move into just what constituted the move. Sean, you went into a little bit um, moving into your space now, like not bugging your parents, then not bugging roommates. But like from that first space, why did you have to get out of there? Like was it incidental? Was it literally you can't make music here anymore? You got to get out? <laughs> Where did that start? Sean, we'll start with you. Well, 
uh, uh, being able to make music without knowingly irritating people is definitely a good part of the factor. But I mean, I think it was mostly just, you know, you're like 19, 20 years old. You don't really want to live with your parents anymore. So yeah. it was a, it was a, it was a combination of those two. And I find just uh, uh, not only not annoying people, but I find my workflow goes so much better when I know that there's nobody else listening. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. that I know there's not somebody on the second floor hearing me play the same bass line <laughs> like 70 mm. times yeah. over trying <laughs> to get it right. A self-consciousness, is that mm. what it is? Like you're yeah. like, I'm yeah. a little... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember mm. mentioning to a friend, they said something about... Uh, there's a there's a feng shui to it too as mm. to do with like energy or something like that okay and it's like you don't want to be thinking about uh, uh, how it sounds to somebody else yeah. if you're trying to like hone hone that uh, that sound by playing it 70 times over and other people probably don't understand that yeah yeah yeah, right? yeah. when you're going through your workflow you should be thinking about the task in hand not uh -huh how you're affecting those in the same house as you you know that, that's something that you get hung up on I yeah find can be like totally. detrimental yeah. to the creative process you know? mm -hmm. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so do you find that you thought like that because you're in the mind frame of like correcting something so you're like in the zone and you're like doing something so playing on loop isn't like something that's like annoying you or affecting you and do you think it's because you might be annoying the other person because I know like I've definitely annoyed people with like <laughs> playing like the same eight bar loop for like two yeah. hours and yeah, you're trying yeah. to get like <laughs> yeah so did you find like that's why what do you mean I don't understand like why you wanted to get your own spot was because well actually that was something I think I discovered once I got my own spot mm. okay and once I started producing where I know that I'm isolated from the outside world and that uh you know what I what's coming out of my speakers is going in here and it's not going anywhere else. Totally. You didn't know that it was a thing. No, I until didn't it wasn't I, there, and yeah. then you were like, "Oh, I feel so much more comfortable not, now." Not until it wasn't there, but until it wasn't there, and then it came back. Oh, mm. yeah, I have right, like, right, right, right. Like my girlfriend's staying at the house with me now, and uh, so now, actually, yeah, now I do have somebody else I'm annoying now. So mm. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, was, and I find, and I found that was such a, a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah where you don't even realize that your brain is processing not only the sound and the task at hand and making this track, but also how you're affecting those around you. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. not something that you really think of in the moment until it's, uh, it goes and comes back. And does, does anybody else have an interesting story about why they had to move out of that first space? Was, was anybody forced out? Mm, no? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> you were. Oh, yeah. Of course. Would you like to elaborate? Um, yeah. Like, I mean, like, you know, just, like, your annoying family members. And then it's, like, also, like, family ties, so, like, everything builds up. So eventually, like, you know, you either get kicked out or you move on. And I got kicked out, like, more than countless times. Mm. Slept on your couch a couple times. I remember. Mm. Um, and then so finally I got my own spot. And then it was, like, I got really lucky because it was kind of, like, I was in this basement. It was probably, like, my bedroom was probably 200 square foot or like way less um so i had a partial studio in there and then a, a full studio that because i was living in my friend's house he had a whole studio set up in his like office oh cool and that was great because he was like super into like modular devices and he had all this crazy stuff and stuff i hadn't played with before um, but yeah, to basically answer your question, yeah, like I kind of got kicked out for sure. <laughs> yeah, <I'll wait. laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, oh wait, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, me was like um, I moved twice, so I moved to like two other cities. I moved to Denver, then moved to San Diego. But in Denver, I had like we were in a in an apartment um, where. I, it was basically, I was upstairs at one point, mm -hmm. and then moved downstairs, but the whole place was brick. Like, the whole Ooh. building was brick, so I could be loud. Yeah. Uh, didn't have to worry about it. And then, when I was in San Diego, um, it was pretty much the same way, and then I moved into a new place myself. And then, yeah, that, would, that was sort of a thing, where, you know, sometimes a security guard might show up and be mm -hmm. like... Keep it down. I think it only happened once or twice. So. Who, who's calling the security guard? 
Oh, someone else on a different floor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it was the, an apartment yeah. complex. Yeah, yeah, it was an apartment complex, but it was like a big, almost almost condo style okay. space, mm-hmm. but I was able to still be relatively loud in it. Okay. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. when I'm tuning bass and stuff like that. Mm. That yeah, would, it gets a little those weird. resonant frequencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that, yeah, would, yeah totally. that would get me really out of the flow if the security guard showed up at my door <laughs> like hey. Keep it down. Keep it down. Like I'm at home right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. security guard. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's bugging like, me at home. <laughs> Unless it's like one of those world star hip hop videos, like where they show up to a party and then they like shotgun a beer. But instead, <laughs> yo, 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 instead he drops like the craziest freestyle on one of oh. the. <laughs> that would be. Uh, that would have been the most hilarious yeah. outcome. But he's like, yeah. Uh, he's like the complete I get, opposite. I get nine an hour for this, so please. Yeah. <laughs> Don't harass me. Please keep it yeah, down. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll keep, I'll turn it down a bit. That would whatever. be. Whatever. But yeah, just moving, I don't know, just being in those different spots because kind of helped uh, yeah. me figure out, you know, who, uh, yeah, who to annoy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> who's annoying who's getting annoyed by it luckily the other roommate I had was a producer too so yes. that helped yeah, yeah. I, I know for myself like moving cities really made me learn how to make music quietly yeah, yeah. <laughs> very true moving in with roommates who I didn't know mm. yep it wasn't they were you know it was something that happened they didn't know I was making music totally so I move in and then I start making music and it was like yep so, I need to be quiet because I don't know these people. Yeah. What did you do to change? Did you just bring your mix down, or did you start producing headfo- in headphones? Uh, headphones, sometimes, but just really quietly. Like, really quietly. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, head right next to the speakers. <laughs> mm-hmm. really, like really, pretty, really, pretty, really, really quietly. Sometimes like, it helps to listen to it quietly. Oh, totally, you, know? you should, yeah. Helps with the mix down. Yeah. And oh, yeah. yeah. That's for a different episodes. Yeah. So. yeah, totally. Mix tips. <laughs> mix tips. Mix tips. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mixtips.com. Oh. So, <laughs> we've talked about where we all started. If you're, if you're a young person out there and you have a, a space and you think that it sucks, everybody has had that space. And it doesn't suck as bad as you think it does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for real. Like, we've all been there. So. Totally. Yeah, um, 100%. Well, and you'll think back about it and you'll be like, holy, like, mm. like going through that, you feel like better about going through it than not totally it, it's you know it's you're cutting your teeth as they say it's yeah. it's when you have to make music in a difficult situation it makes it once you have a decent situation yeah you can just yeah. do whatever you want mm-hmm. yeah fly free yes yes um so let's move on now to where we are making music now um as i mentioned at the beginning of the podcast the reason we're talking about this today, what kind of inspired it, was the fact that our space is, is changing, so we're all going to be moving into new spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now we're all in that space, which I know I really like. You guys like it, I think. Oh, yeah. um, Jeremy, why don't you, you start and tell us about the space where you're making music right now and what, what it's like and how, how it's facilitated your production. So in terms of that, like aside from the space that we share, mm-hmm. I'm usually in my apartment and I just on my desk got my sound card got my headphones Mm -hmm. and I have a decent pair of headphones that I bought from here at Beat Drop um (laughs) plug yeah plug plug plug. um yeah I use those and work and do my mix downs and things like that Mm -hmm. out of those headphones and in terms of me making stuff I go to our space Mm -hmm. and you know I could just sit there and track out get the ideas down things like that I don't have to worry about mixing anything down or what's anything until afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's like I would create in one space and then analyze in another space. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's pretty uh, useful and it's awesome that we're across the alley from each other. It's close to your house, which makes it very convenient, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And what kind of gear are you utilizing right now in the space? Um, In the space, in the space we have, in the space... Okay, so I've been using a lot of the uh, Kurzweil, um, like the rack mount synths. Mm, the K2000. Yeah, yeah so the K2000 good. synths. I've been using, um, what is it? The Poly, the Poly, is it Poly 80? The Poly 61. Poly 61, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I've been using that one. Um, yeah, I've been kind of switching between those two okay. quite a bit. So 
Um, that's usually where I go in and work on stuff like that. Um, when you had the the Boss drum machine there, the DR six sixty. Yeah, when you had the six sixty there, I was like kind of messing with that a bit yeah. too, like recording some sounds off of it, yeah. and like. Um, I was able to set that up to MIDI and it actually helped me out learn it helped me learn more about like workflow mm -hmm. yeah. and you know if I would have a space with um, where I could set things up via MIDI to a controller or to a MIDI process yeah and stuff. yeah yeah absolutely so um, and how to record that stuff out and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah my program handles it really well so nice yeah yeah, because what program do you use? I'm in Renoise, so right. yeah, but it handles it. It handles MIDI like really, really well. Mm -hmm. It's actually like kind of made for that. It's just math. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it's a math. music calculator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, it works out in that sense. So yeah, I was able to um, kind of program and trigger things and just record what I was doing like as I went along. So. And what is your plan for when the space? when our space is going to be gone at the end of this month? Um, I'm still going to be pretty much working from my space at, in, in my apartment, mm -hmm. just knocking a bunch of things out there, and then, yeah, going going from there. So, yeah. Well, I, I think that's kind of, it's indicative of what we were talking about, like, sometimes you have more stuff to use, Yeah. sometimes you have less, Yeah. and that ability of starting out with nothing at your parents' house, it always mm -hmm. means you can go back to your laptop, yeah, yeah and a pair of headphones. That's exactly yeah. what I'm and doing now. If you're lucky, a little MIDI controller, and sometimes, I know for myself, that even makes my life easier. Yep. Getting rid of all the other yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, and Liam, what are you utilizing in the space right now? So it's the same space that Jeremy's Jeremy's using. What's what's your home setup like right now? Uh, home setup. Uh, right now is I just got an Electron Digitac, so that's like a sampler sequencer. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and then the dr 660 I had a push to it, so I sold that because um, I'm more, I don't know, I just find for every producer different things work better, right? Um, and some really like, I don't even know what that Casio is. I have this really like small... The MT four forty. Oh, I think that one is. is. Yeah, that one. I, like I that love one. that. Thing. Yeah. Hmm. So it's like a little toy. Yeah. Joint. Yeah. yeah. I have lifetime dibs if you ever get rid of that thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deal. Um, and then I have like a cassette eight track mixing board, mm -hmm. uh, which I got for like sixty bucks. Nice. And Kijiji, I find those finds are the best. Yeah. <laughs> especially vintage gear, right? Because you know. With digital sounds, you can make things sound really polished. I'm sure you can do the opposite and make it sound lo-fi, but it's like, I find that there's characteristics about sounds that come from analog gear. Mm -hmm. It's a warmth to it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I have a Tascam back in Detroit that's like, yeah, pretty much an analog Tascam. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, I just run it through the monitors and things like that and run things through it. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it just has this nice warmth to it. So Yeah. Yeah, and then um, at the other studio, same thing. Like I love the Kurzweil, so good. That's my favorite one. Yeah, it's 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 a beautiful piece of gear, man. Mm. And then <laughs> I'm trying to find you guys each one right now. By the way, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> for free? <laughs> no, not for free. <laughs> not for <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, same thing. Polly um, at the studio. I used to use an MPC. I love samplers. Yeah. You know you love samplers. Yeah. Your SP12. <sighs> Yeah. It's so cool. Do so you have an SP? I have an SP-1200. Stop it. Yeah. What? It's insane. What? <laughs> you can't stay in the studio. It got it got really scratched oh, in there. And so yeah. I had to take it out because I was like... Gotcha. I just didn't want to... Protective. It's like a child. That's, we'll talk well, about yeah, that. No, we'll talk about yeah, no. That yeah, yeah. That's important. Yeah. That, that, that thing, that's an important piece of care. Yeah. Um, Cool and and Sean, what what's your space like at home right now, or is it at home? Do you have a, a, a yeah. separate space? Yeah, it's at at home. I um, is actually when I updated my sound system, I decided it was probably time to to get a home along with it to start renting. Um, I I got uh, uh, frustrated with making a track, playing it out on a club system, and the low end just being way too muddy and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So what I did is I went and got myself a nice like 600 watt uh, 12 inch uh, subwoofer just so I can get a better idea of how it's going to sound once I actually bring it to the club. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
that's been treating me really well. I feel like uh, it's made my sound a lot more cohesive. Um, in the studio right now, I have everything running through this this old Soundcraft mixer that I had spoken to you about. Um, how I got that mixer uh, is this company that I used to work for. The CEO had overheard me talking about the studio that I was making, mm -hmm. this new house that I was renting. Put me in touch with his pastor, who, um, who I went to go visit him. He had all of this old gear that was just collecting dust, mm -hmm. this old power mixer with like a really beautiful spring reverb built into it, mm -hmm. and this 24-channel uh, uh, Soundcraft mixer that has been my problem child <laughs> the last five years. You've had it for five years. Wow. Yeah, it's been about five years. <laughs> oh, and when wow. I got it, it was completely busted. Yeah. Like, nothing worked. Yeah. I could not get a, sing a signal through it. Cleaned the crap out of it, got <clears throat> half the channels to work. So like, uh, if I'm trying to do a mix down through it, it's it's a nightmare. Uh, channels will stop working halfway through, but when I get it through, it sounds nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when I figure it out, it sounds nice. Wow. And then um, got uh, uh, old uh, an original push that I use for my workflow, a, a, a 61 key MIDI controller. And my latest obsession has been the the Profit Rev Two Ooh. that I've been playing with for the past little while. Oh, you awesome. did you you bought one? The sixteen voice, nice. I did. Nice. Yeah. Oh, and, I love it. And what is your room like? Are you using a separate bedroom at your house, or is it a basement space, or is it your living room? What's your space like? It's a it's the living room. It's so the it's living a, room. It's a great big uh, space. It's very bouncy. Not ideal for mixing. But I feel like once you really get used to a space, and if there's like a doorknob that's buzzing at a certain frequency or something like <laughs> that, <laughs> your brain just uh, uh, starts to tune it out. Yeah. yeah. Like I remember uh, when Abdallah was here, he, uh, I was showing him some, some tracks on the new system, and just, he says, just, doesn't that annoy you? Just one sec. Uh, yeah. Abdullah is a friend of ours from, where is he living, Jordan? Jordan? He's in Jordan. He's in Jordan. Hi, Abdullah. Hi, Abdullah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Babs. <laughs> Sorry, um, continue. And he says, doesn't that annoy you? And I said, what? What doesn't annoy me? It's like, and then uh, it was the doorknob is just like vibrating <laughs> violently at like a certain frequency that the, the bass kick kept on hitting. And I hadn't heard it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I probably hadn't heard it in in months, mm -hmm. right? Because I had just uh, learned to tune it out. But it's um, it's a nice space. Uh, well, my ears are all tuned to it, and I feel like I can get some good work done there. And how long have you been in there? Coming on five years. Five years. Yeah, oh, so you're yeah. nestled. Yeah. yeah. You're nested. It's, yeah. You can sit down, and you know mm -hmm. where everything is. I could, yeah, I could. Yeah. I could go blind and just continue working. That's very nice. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little jealous, yeah. as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We're all moving. <laughs> yeah. It's the stress yeah. of yeah. Yeah. trying Tracking to make a new place your space yeah. again. Gabe, yeah. you just finished moving. Uh, yeah, I'm still kind of finishing setting up my acoustic foam. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just finished kind of, uh, well, yeah, moving to a new place. So. Okay been looking for because I've been living with a roommate yes uh, for the last seven months and we had a house that was way too big for us kind of expensive so we downgraded and now somehow my room is actually bigger than my last room so my space is essentially a studio and there's a bed where I sleep but that's that's my room okay. <laughs> so I got um, you know a couple MIDI controllers um, Ableton push you yeah. also film in there too, right? You right. you do YouTube and so yeah, yeah. YouTube so I do. In there. Yeah, so that's a, kind of an important part of this having everything laid out, kind of symmetrically, but efficiently, so that I can reach everything with my hands. It uh, sounds decent. So I got the the foam set up on the walls, and uh, I don't play too loud, and cool. I don't have a subwoofer anymore. So I just play with uh, like five inch. Um, Presonus speakers. Okay. So not too loud, um, but I do have a. It's um, what do you call it? Base aware. It's kind of like the sub pack. Okay. Like, yeah, you, you put it on, you strap it on, and you is it like what you're going like this is like a it's is it like a backpack so, like this? Yeah, it's pack? like a little backpack, and you put it on, and it vibrates. Okay. Yeah, it's like so a wearable on your shoulders. 
No, no, it goes on your back. It's the same as a sub pack. S- same as a sub pack, okay. yeah. Just a different brand. Uh, this is like from a Kickstarter type of thing years okay. ago. And uh, honestly, that saves my life though because I can just wear headphones and then I can check my bass. I can feel, you know, if it's like crowded or muddy or whatever. Mm-hmm, and then, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, other than that, I don't know. I use a microphone. Um, not too many. And how so. how long were you in your last space? Seven months, you said. Seven months at the last space. So yeah. that that yeah. was probably, I guess, just enough time mm-hmm. to get comfortable. Oh yeah. And then as soon as you got comfy, <laughs> yeah, you had to move out. I yeah. did, yeah. But I have I had everything on these like keyboard stands. Like all my hardware is on different keyboard stands, like single stands or two tier stands. I have a three tier stand. Yeah. Mm. And uh, everything is just set up there. So I basically moved my entire studio. studio as is, like I just reset it up in a new bedroom. So the same way. Same way. Oh, yeah. that's nice. So yeah. it worked out because again, like this new room I'm in is a little bit longer, so I have more okay. room everywhere. So okay. Yeah. So I'm not gonna lie. I just just talking about this yeah, is stressing just, me out. <laughs> um, no, it's yeah. gonna be sad. Like I'm actually yeah. gonna be pretty sad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been like, like two, yeah. two and a half years. Three years, I think. Oh man. In that in our studio. Um, that was Sharif who started that studio, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. my friend. Oh, oh yeah, ben. ben. Well, it was. Uh, yes, it was his space before. Yeah. 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 And then it got transferred. So it's all been kind of just within friends, like. Well, we kind of revamped some uh, quite a bit, like yeah. some stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, you stuff, did. But we bought some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah, we, we were both in that space, like working on music <laughs> with Ben when it was like his space. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, it was pretty bare bones, but at the same time, it was like, you went in and got work done, right? So it was like... It's crazy, because it's like the perfect setup, because it's raised off of concrete floor with wood, I'm pretty sure, because there's a step up to it, right? Yeah, it's raised. It's carpet. We have... There's like barely any reverb. Mm -hmm. There's things on the ceiling, there's things on the wall, like... It's pretty cozy. The mix in there... Yeah, super cozy. Oh, man, that's what I'm going to miss the most, is like how clear the mix can be. I can't mix anything down. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just going no. used to it. It's like, yeah. it's his scenario of like, just yeah. like, you know, you get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is nice. It's, it's, it's a bit strange. I'll just elaborate a little bit on the space on our sat space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the emo, the emo cave right now. Um, <laughs> it's nice. It's in, uh, an apartment building. And so there's an apartment above it, but it's a friend of mine who has that apartment and it's his daughter's bedroom above us. And she's not there often. And she also doesn't care because she's eight. (laughs) (laughs) So he, it's basically like the neighbor is the landlord. If he has an issue. She's like, can you keep it down? I'm having tea time. Totally. I'm having a tea party. She's like dancing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) But that's, that's happened so rarely that it's been, it's been a really nice central cheap space. For us. Well, it's downtown too. Yeah. It's close to everybody's house. Um, Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit sad, but I'm, it's, I'm not, it's, I'm a little bit relieved too. It's the same. True. Just, mm. true, true. I love you guys. Yeah. Hey. I'm, yeah. I'm a little excited to just have like my own space. Yeah. Again, you know, well, like, no, no, a lot awesome. of it is your stuff. Well, a lot of it thing is I'm pretty a, sure. A lot of it's my stuff. <laughs> I was like, thanks for letting me use your stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's been great, but yeah, it's it's gonna be. So where are you moving to? I'm moving into my girlfriend's house, and uh, my new space is going to be uh, her second bedroom. Nice. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So it's gonna be in the apartment. Is it oh, that's concrete awesome. Concrete or yes. wood? Okay. It's, it's a it's a it's a much newer building than uh, than the building where the studio is. Ah. Uh, okay. So it's gonna be. So it, she's she, if she's having if she's having a tea party, I'm gonna have to keep it down. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For so sure. I think like that would be a good segue into like how how are you gonna start out your studio? Like, what are you gonna put in there first? I don't want to talk about it. Because um, <laughs> you're going to worry about sound, or is it more just getting synths in there and stuff? No, right, like, because we're moving, the first the first priority is just getting everything in there. Mm-hmm. I, I have to get as much stuff in there. It's not only the studio that I have to fit in there. It's also my record collection, mm-hmm. my turntables. 
Oh, yeah. Man. How big is the bedroom? A lot smaller than our space now. So <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's going to be a real uh, challenge. Yeah. But a kind of an exciting one, you know? When, once it's done, it's going to be... It's gonna be cozy, you know. You make your yeah. space, you figure it <laughs> oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Once you make yeah. it cozy, it's just yeah. like yeah, proper. Yeah, it's, it's it's perfect, man. Yeah. So. But I have to fit a lot of stuff in there. And as you notice, I'm down. I've sold one keyboard so far, yeah. and I might sell another one. Okay. I might sell. Never mind. Um, yeah. All good. All good. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's stressful. Like moving spaces. Have any of you had an experience like Gabe? You're going through right now. You just moved your space. Yeah, it's not the f funnest thing in the no. whole world. No, well, it was definitely stressful trying to find a good location, right? So. To accommodate not only your living situation but also Work. your ability to make music. No, my lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Totally. Does anybody have um, a story about <clears throat> that where um, it was a really difficult time where you didn't really have a place to make music. You were trying to find somewhere to live where you could be making music or trying to find a space. Like when you moved here until you were in the studio space. I'm with this guy for six months. Oh, yeah, I forgot oh. to mention yeah. that. Oh, please. I was at his house. So, so six months. The studio that I had described earlier. Yeah. Yes. I had uh, Jeremy, what was it, six months, Jeremy? Yeah. I was yeah. there for about six months. At yeah, when he place. first moved okay. here. Yeah, mm. we. We hosted him for about six months. Yeah. Were you living in the studio? Was that your bedroom? Yeah, I had, well, there was another space downstairs. There was okay. another room downstairs, and that was my room. Oh, downstairs. Then, yeah. yeah, we had okay. a bedroom. Front yeah, room. Oh, we're making him bed. sleep on the couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought, I thought <laughs> you were not. Like, you sleep on this rack mount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put some sheets down. This is your pillow. Oh my god. <laughs> so that yeah. that kind of put. How did that affect? Sean, you having some, like you mentioned, having somebody else there may, makes it a little more difficult for you, knowing that someone's going to listen. Is it different when it is another producer, when it's someone else who makes music? I'd, <clears throat> I'd argue it's a little worse. It's a little worse. But, but it's a little more music. difficult. Because I, well, it's, it's a little easier in some ways, because if you're, as I spoken earlier about, you know, replaying the same bass line a million times, yeah. it's because here's a man who understands. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, it's like, oh shit, I have this uh, producer who I've been diligently following for the past, you know, like three years, uh, listening to what I'm making right now. And so then that has its own anxieties, mm -hmm. right? I feel like it balances itself out at the end. Okay. <laughs> but it I, was yeah, good. I could see the same thing too, because it was just like, dude, like, you know, I'm make, I'm making something. I just want to make sure it's not like weird yeah. or tedious or loud <laughs> yeah. or you know too yeah. repetitive or yeah. something like that. You know, yeah. if I'm like tuning a bass or like yeah. tuning a kick or something, I just want to be like, you don't want to hear do 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 the whole time. You know what I mean? Especially because so, your bedroom was like right underneath. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Too. And yeah. so, totally. were you making music in Sean's studio when yeah. you were living there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were nice enough to share your studio space with him. Oh, yeah. um, how was that? I, like for us, it's I've there's right now there's five of us, yeah, mm -hmm. at our studio, and it's never really been that much of an issue, like with scheduling. Yeah. Um, did you guys find any issues with that? Like when you were living there, it was the same dynamic pretty much. Like yeah. if, with our studio now, yeah. Yeah. like you like Sean was working during the week, and I would be there working music, okay. and then Sean would come home and work on music, and then yeah, that would yeah. literally be it. So okay. I'd be up early. Do the nine to five, and then he would come in. And yeah, the studio got a, a lot of use that six months. Yeah, and then like awesome. over the weekend, like yeah, Sean's usually there, so I'm like, cool. I'm going out for the weekend. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that. it really actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it helped me. Um, it helped me kind of make a schedule for yeah. what I was doing. Although so. I remember when you were finishing off the exit. EP, I was kind of like giving you your space. Oh, yeah, yeah that right. was like, yeah. whatever. That was still, I mean, yeah. even still, I was able to like kind of, you know, schedule my time around when yeah. you needed to use mm. it. You that was know. good, that was an exciting time. Yeah, yeah. it definitely yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely was. Wow. Have, yeah. have any Set. of you, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> have any of you had an experience with sharing? That's something I hadn't even really thought about mm. because it's been pretty easy for us in my experience, um, but have you had any experiences sharing space where it was difficult where it affected your ability to make music or maybe somebody else's ability to make music or that, friendships or friendships mm. Oof. oh yeah no, no. Hmm. yeah i mean 
like one situation I would say. Okay. Just like if two people want to work on stuff, but both of them have something, a project in mind. So maybe not like necessarily collaborating at that time can stir the pot up a little bit. Oh, are you talking about our band? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I was just talking about like working with producers that aren't here or like, you yes. know, like just like going through experiences, you know. Yeah, collaborating. I, we, we could do yeah. a whole episode. We should do a whole episode on collaborating. Collab, yeah. Um, the good, I the, enjoy it. I do too. I love it. The good, the bad, and the lot. ugly. Yeah. yeah. If you're just open minded, that's the big thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just go in there and make stuff. You're not yeah. trying to, like, you know. One up know. each other. Yeah. That, like, that, that never, never mind all that. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. For me, like, yeah, I'm, I mean, if the great example would be, you know, between me and Sean, it's like, Sean needs a spot. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going downstairs, throw my headphones on. Mm-hmm. And we keep working. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's nothing else to that. You know yeah. what I mean? It wasn't yeah. like, oh my God, I need this space right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, you're nice enough yeah. to share the space for me. Of course, I'm going to. Like, if you need it, I'm like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I just unplug. Yeah, yeah. yeah go do my thing. Like, also, I'm never uh, going to be like, oh, my God, like, I need this, like, right now. Mm-hmm. Like, if you, you know I mean? if you have a horror story yeah. <laughs> about a friendship that ended because of sharing studio space, please tell us in the comments. Tell us in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think it helped a great deal that this guy can literally sleep through anything. Yeah, I'm like, a sound oh, sleeper. Okay. okay. You have to put I'm a very in? sound yeah. sleeper. Nice. I was testing Oh, no, no. First, I just go like, to sleep. And that was it. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Literally, I was playing it at the same volume that I always play it. And it's just... Yep. Oh, I'd wake up and hear the bass. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've slept, at, I've slept at very large clubs in Berlin. It's from years of point. festivaling. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I've definitely done that. I'm just a sound sleeper in general. Wow. Like, it, it, it helped out a lot. So, I guess my genetic dynamic, I, I can, you know, owe it to myself to stay in loud spaces and I've slept at the club before a gig so <laughs> do you find it was hard to get asleep but then once you sleep you're good oh no like I would just if I'm tired I'm going to sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah I will wow. sleep anywhere that's awesome yeah, wow. yeah I well, don't care I like, I learned that from traveling too it was sleep on a bus yep I can sleep on a truss I can sleep in a house I can sleep with a mouse. Yeah, like, <laughs> sleep anywhere, you know. It's 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 green eggs and ham. Like, yeah, yeah, for real. Like it's anywhere. straight Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Like, yeah, this what there's a nice rock. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> right, uh, especially when I fly. I'm like, I don't care if I got like 16 hours of sleep like the day before. If I get on that flight within the first hour, I'm usually napping. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just that's just how my body works. I'm just like, I'm out. Have so you ever slept buses. in our studio? Um. When it was not your studio, when it's it was Ben's. Allowed. Oh, when it was Ben's. Okay. Yes, definitely slept in that studio. Like, you slept in the studio. Yeah. I've fallen asleep while producing it. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like in there for like what? 10 hours. Yo, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then you're like, it's like 5 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely been there. Wow. Yeah. I'll, uh, never, I'll never forget about uh, the picture of you at Base Coast where you're just like asleep. In the oh, bed, yeah. And there's just like a grasshopper just showing Grasshopper on your laying my eye. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was ridiculous amazing. Yeah. But wow. I was like, this is testament to my There's proof, right? sleeping Ability anywhere. Sleep. Yeah. I was like at a campsite. It's my first time camping at a festival like ever. And yeah, the last night or the last day, I was pretty much like hanging outside of my tent because it was too hot. And I was like, I'm going to nap right here. So it's like some meditation like, stuff right there. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> and then like, yeah, this grasshopper just came in and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, let's uh, let's change gears a little bit, and let's talk about dream spaces. Mm. Ooh. Let's talk about if you dream had, spaces. if you had, and and let's not talk about you know if you had a billion dollars what you would do <laughs> because we could just talk forever and ever and ever. Yeah. But let's let's bring it down to a little bit more realistic. But let's say you know let's say you had a little bit of money. Mm. The renting market in Calgary is really great right now. There's mm. a lot of spaces lot to rent. Space. There's a lot of uh, apartments. There's a lot of uh, rental opportunities. So let's say you could pick your kind of space, what that would be like. Let's start first explain to me what uh, the room would be like and then talk about gear. We don't need a 
detailed list of right. every MIDI cable you're going to be putting in there. <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Uh, Liam, let's start with you. Like as far as like synths and stuff, or like yeah, like let's first your space. Like my dream space. Yeah. Um. Some something with a view of the mountains would be nice. Mm, yes. Um, I, I'm actually lucky because I have that right now. So what you're saying is your dreams have already come true. <laughs> well, okay. No, yes, well, yes, you know, just, just, just wait. <laughs> Hold up. Well, no, because like the space I have has a lot of reverb in it, and like that's something that like I'm not down for. Yeah. Right. So definitely like having acoustic setup is like would be my number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because from there you can do so much and share like. I don't know, like as much as I like personally producing on headphones, it does get old. Um, it's bad for yours too. You can't play in headphones all of the time. Yeah, no, to, yeah, that that's You need to go back yeah. and forth and, and yeah. If you, you need do, to feel it too. If you do that for six yeah. hours, that's really bad for your ears. Mm -hmm. And your ears are your tool. Don't don't produce yeah. in headphones all yeah. day long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do listen quietly though. Like, don't crank yeah. it. Quietly, yeah. Listen. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do the soft listens. Yeah. That, that's for the mix episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I'd probably, I would, I mean, obviously would want in like an 808 original. That's dream. No, let, let, like <laughs> dream, but you don't have Since. a billion dollars. It's a, little, yeah, a realistic I dream. I know. Okay. <laughs> a microphone set up, like just like <laughs> all that stuff. For I sure. like that. That's, For sure. Sure. No, that's simple, right? Like, yeah. you know, like. You don't need an uh, actual boot. You just need like one of those. Um, what are those? Those shields. Yeah, those shields. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a little vocal shield. Like no, I don't. I don't sing. But some baffling. Nice, like uh, a vocal booth. Baff yeah. Some baffling. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. that would be really nice. And yeah. Then, yeah. Just like preamps and stuff. It would be nice to have a bigger mixing board. I mean, just like the classic like dream. Like I think all of us have probably like very similar. Um, dreams of what, or like ideas of what a dream studio would look like, because we've well, that's probably what, that's all what seen we're finding out right now. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it would be nice to have like a big space, right, with yeah. like a private booth, like for example, like a f 600 square foot booth to record vocals, and you could have a drum kit in there. It would actually be really nice to have a drum mm. kit for oh, yeah. sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're a drummer. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I haven't drummed for a while, but. You're yeah, my, you're my favorite on and off again drummer. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I think that's it. Like, just like space is a big one too. Okay. Yeah, Jeremy. I would try to recreate what I had in my parents' basement. Really? Yeah. Why? Wow. Because the space that I had was very insulated and very cozy, okay. and it was it was because there was a bunch of stuff in there. Okay. But. I feel like I could, if I were to get the room kind of metering from that basement, mm -hmm. I could try to replicate that okay. and then insulate that even more. Mm. Um, that's what I would want is like a basement space with like really good insulation. Parents basement? Deluxe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like for real. Cause the sound, like I made tons yeah. of records in that basement. Yeah. Like, Could you hire a woman to like, Tend to be your mom and bring you pizza pops. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yes. <laughs> you know, need, your, need your dad to come and knock on your door and tell you to turn it down. Yeah. yeah. That's extra. Get my parents that's extra. full recreation. See, that's cheaper than an 808. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's way more. That's a, that's a weird Craigslist uh, posting there. I was that like, was. That I need was, someone to be my parents for the studio. That's <laughs> that's actually a service though. Yeah. <laughs> that's an unexpected answer. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. And what about uh, just a little bit? You know, like what would your general kind of gear setup be? Um, I I don't know. That's a good question because like the stuff that I have now is pretty, or at my parents' place mm -hmm. is pretty um pretty good. I would probably upgrade my monitors mm -hmm. and then get a better sound card. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd probably go for like a close two thousand dollar sound card mm -hmm. and then get some like pretty decent uh, monitors and things like that. Um, try to get the 8Ms or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, along the lines mm -hmm. of that. Um, just something clearer mm -hmm. and flatter. And mm -hmm. then, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I, I'm a fan of portability yes. in a studio. 
in like I being, do not have that right being now. Being able to be mobile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like um working in the box is kind of like important for me. Yeah. Um I do have a lot of like handheld thing. Like mm-hmm. I have a DX one hundred, I have like um this thing called the bleep drum, it's like a mm-hmm. little handheld uh, drum machine. Small things. Yeah. 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 Small like little handheld things. I used to have monotrons for a bit too. Like the cork monotrons. So I, yeah. I I find that interesting you know we've noticed i think um i'm just gonna go off track a little bit for a minute um you know the portabilitization of synths that the companies are doing that yeah roland's doing that yamaha's doing you know uh uh, teenage engineering like everybody is making really things that you know you can have a backpack totally yeah and I see a lot of uh, complaining about that from, you know, studio guys who mm. are like, hate mini keys and are angry about, you know, just the portability of stuff. But I think maybe for, I'm, I'm curious how much that is what we want, like our generation is actually interested in, or is it because that's what they're making for us? Well, I'm on the road all the time. Yeah. Like, I would like to be able to sketch something out. Yeah. <laughs> I would also like, you know, like the bleep drum to sound really bad, but it looks like a freaking, like, bomb device. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to yeah. carry that around so much. <laughs> yeah. And have TSA, like, be really weird about it. You know yeah. what I mean? But, yeah. so I would like to have, like, something like a little synth, or like a little keyboard. And, yeah. You know, like a little drum machine, like the pocket operator and stuff. Mm-hmm. That doesn't, that... Yeah, I can, like, move around with and, like I said, just sketch things out. I don't have to go too far in or... Who, who, do you, do any of you remember recently, there was a picture that um, was making the rounds in the synth internet community about, I want to say it was Machine Drum, but I'm not sure if that's who it was, who's like, this is where I produced and recorded and mixed and everything my record. Burial. It was Burial? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it was just his computer and two speakers and a... It's very small table in front of a window. Wait, was that him or oh. Fortet? Oh. I thought it was, I thought was it was Fortet. Fortet? I, I think thought it was, was Burial. Nah, I think it was Fortet. Was it Fortet? Yeah, that was funny. Was, yeah, and it had like the tiny window and it turned yeah, into yeah. a whole meme. Yeah. Oh, yeah and everybody yeah. was like, yes. yo, this is where I record in studios. It's like yes. somebody's like, it was like convenience store. <laughs> Please tell us in the comments if it was Burial or Fortet. Machine Drum or Fortet. Thank yeah. you. Um, Versus. But that just shows like, you know, you make with what you got. Yeah. Totally, and and I think I think that's a really good point and a thing for um, those who are starting out to remember that even for bi- like big big guys who you know maybe your favorite producer in the whole world has scaled everything back and is making things on a MacBook. One hundred percent. It's yeah. from two thousand eleven, and he has two speakers and a tiny interface, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like it's totally possible to make. The technology is here for us now, yeah. where we don't have to worry about that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Um, IK Multimedia is a very good uh, brand that does that. They kind of mm-hmm. market them in that. They do um, MIDI yokes for uh, your iPads and things like that, or your iPhone. Mm-hmm. They have like XY yeah. controllers and stuff. Mm-hmm. That they have. It's called the iRing. And you just put oh, that yeah. on, and then just pretty much your iPad acts or iPhone acts like a, a MIDI controller, like a XY pad. Oh. Oh, yeah, like a, so cool. the, like I have that. Like and a like, chaos pad kind yeah. of. Yeah, and then they make little um, drum machine pads. They have like little DJ mixers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like they pretty much, you know, and I have most of that stuff because mm-hmm. I was like working with them at one point and they were just sending me things as like they were making them. So I was, yeah, I just have all these little handheld devices that not only I can have in the studio, I, like to pick up and just be like, okay, I don't have yeah. to worry about plugging this MIDI thing in or having this controller be compatible with so, so it's like A, B, make a track. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like mess with this certain Backpack thing. Backpack studio. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I like to have that. Um, I, I'm more on that side of mobility and portability with it. So. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Gabe, where, where are you sitting on your current realistic dream studio? Realistic dream studio. I think it's realistic, but uh, I would love to get like a warehouse space Mm -hmm. that's like on top of some weird building that's like a you know some business that like sells like marbles or something it's just like (laughs) something super random you're gonna break all the marbles (laughs) (laughs) but it's a you know just I don't know it's semi-decent large empty space where I can like 
make a little vocal booth in the corner, mm -hmm. have like my synth like production station, and then have like a couch area where I can just like chill and pr you know do some editing and mixing, and it would be a you know a space where I can decorate it and do film and like yeah. video stuff. So just something that's big and a big open, big open. Yeah, not a lot of stuff, just open and okay. spacious. Yeah. And as far as gear, like, is there anything that you don't have right now that you would like really, we all, we all think, I think at some point there's that thing that's just going to change everything. Yeah. It never, ever, ever does, but <laughs> we always think it will. Be. I've, uh, I'm guilty of buying too many things. So I think at this point I'm, I'm pretty good. You're good. But I would definitely upgrade a micro my microphone. I would upgrade my speakers for sure. Yeah, 100%. And, uh... Keyboards, I mean, yeah, I'd probably try to get a nicer workstation like Yamaha. Because mm -hmm. I have a, like a kind of low-end Yamaha workstation. Yeah. So maybe like a, a montage. Like a motif or something. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Something a bit more recent. But, you know, if I had to do with what I got, like, I just want a, a nicer space where I can lounge. Yeah. yeah. A hammock. A hammock, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Studio yeah. hammock. Studio stuff. hammock. Yeah. 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 That's we talked about thinking. that, I remember. We talked about studio That's hammock. another thing I was thinking, too. Like, now thinking back to my parents space or whatever the basement um right next to the desk i had tv mm -hmm. that was like you know just plug into my computer that's my double that's my other monitor when i'm done with that or just throw a movie on yeah i got like a couch space right there just chill and watch a movie yeah. i can extract myself from that spot mm -hmm. yeah just do something completely different yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's a good idea on the like lounge it. area because yeah, you, need, you need a break you know it's yeah totally, totally you, totally, not, you totally. don't want to get distracted but you also don't want to just be super bored you're like okay i'm at the studio here so i should do some work but yeah you know, maybe a couple hours go by and then you're like well what do i do now what do i do now yeah there, there's no totally. wi-fi at this place yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So. dreamcast dreamcast no <laughs> word. i have a dreamcast. dreamcast we had a dreamcast set up yeah. in yeah. my pants basement yeah. no straight up like i have dreamcast yeah <laughs> yeah no like we definitely had that set up yeah. like a place we had a playstation 3 and a dreamcast and a playstation 2 that was nice. just like underneath wow. on a rack. And then we just switch everything. Or I had everything set up. So all I need to do is unplug my cable and then sit on the couch, fire up one of those, and you play sample? for like a few hours. Sample, I could sample back in. Ooh. Like, yeah, That's sample out cool. to in. Because I have the Tascam mixer. Get I'm those, telling you, get I want Shenmue that space. Samples? I need that space again. <laughs> like, uh, just to have that little tiny space and then have yeah. that insulation. No, just, I want to come. I can that. I come visit you at, when you go to your parents' house in Detroit? Yo, come through, man. Couch downstairs. <laughs> I want to see this dream space, dream basement. It's so Deluxe. cozy. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like so unorthodox, but it's so like You love it. Yeah. That was like I made so many tunes out of that mm -hmm. space. Okay. And I miss it. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Sean, what's what's your realistic dream space like? Realistic dream space. Um, I'm pretty happy with what I got right now. Mm -hmm. It'd be pretty nice if I could move that up to the penthouse of the, the, the bow building or something like that. <laughs> you. Oh, yeah. That'd be real nice. <laughs> yeah. um, For those who don't know, the bow is the tallest building in Calgary, so that would be the view up there must be yeah. so beautiful. unreal. So nice. Yeah. So nice. Have you been up there? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you can see the, the Rockies pretty well, so that would be nice. Um, when you say realistic space, uh, uh, I think about my recent visit to the National Music Center, which is, mm -hmm. in my opinion, an unrealistic. Yes, mm -hmm. that dream is unrealistic studio. dream. Yeah, studio. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. We have that here in town. So, mm -hmm. what is an unrealistic dream space? <laughs> yeah, that, that the synth room. That's an unrealistic dream yeah, space. Yeah, like unrealistic highly unrealistic. Dream space. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's totally. A, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Totally. Um, so, Liam, you mentioned let's let's just drop one piece of unrealistic dream gear that you like. You said an eight hundred eight. I don't know if that would be your answer, but um, Sean, let's start back down at the end with you. Like, if you could have like whatever you wanted, you you have one thing to add to your studio. It can be anything. What do you mm. get? <clears throat> Unrealistic dream gear. Um, that's a one un unrealistic piece of dream gear. Yeah. Maybe like a... Let's see, I would have said like a really nice polyphonic analog synth, but now I've actually got one. 
Ha-ha. <laughs> so Dreams what's, what's have been realized. realized. You, can, you can never have too many polyphonic analogs in the sun. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying true. to think of another one. Yeah. Uh, having like, a, like an Oberheim would be really yeah. nice. Maybe the trident board. Get like a Ooh, trident yeah. mixing board. Yeah. yeah then it doesn't yeah, matter yeah, yeah. what you make. Mix it down on the trident board. Yeah. Which that they have at the National, yeah. National Music Center. Center. Yeah. 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 NFC. Yeah. Yeah, Calgary, Alberta, yeah. Canada. Yeah, <laughs> um, that would be yeah, that would be That'd pretty be cool. cool to have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anybody else on top of your head? Dream gear, dream piece, Gabe. This is super like I would probably not even use it often, but there's this Japanese guitar. It's a custom artist model from some band uh, that I, when I was a teenager I loved, and this custom guitar costs like six grand or something. And I would have to actually go to Japan and buy it there and bring it back. Okay. Or, like, cause, I mean, either way, I'll be paying a ton of uh, import taxes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, but they don't ship to Canada. Like, you'd have to get someone to ship it to you. Okay. Yeah. So, Interesting. But it's beautiful. It just, I love it, and... It sounds amazing. It sounds amazing, but uh, I would just, like, hang it up in the wall and be like, ah. <laughs> yep. I would maybe pick it up and play a little melody and then just hang it back up. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's 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 almost not even a dream piece of gear. It's almost just a security blanket. Of, <laughs> a really expensive. This makes me feel good in my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Everything's complete now. So. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So. Uh, either of you two, do you have a, do you have an answer? I've got like four, so yeah, I yeah. Think. Oh. I, I've got like four. Okay, um, give us your four, and then give us your one out of those four. Mm. Okay, mm. so the two that are attainable but still kind of like, hey, I really would like these before they go away. Uh, the machine drum, yep, from mm. Electron, mm -hmm. yeah, and the OP one oh, from Teenage yeah. Engineering. Teenage Engineering, mm -hmm. I've. Messed with both, I absolutely love them. I hope you won so cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really incredible. So I had one. with one hey? You didn't have one. Yeah. I had one, yeah. one. Oh, perfect. The OPZ, and it's like oh, I want that. So crazy. <laughs> yeah, so like I would love to have something from at least something from that company. Yeah, yeah. In any sense, um, what was the other one? Um, but those aren't un too unrealistic. No, those aren't too unrealistic. Um, yeah, I want your dream. I want something what's that's crazy. The, the most expensive I know. thing. I just want. had it out of my head. Oh, uh, I need DX7. I want a DX7. That's not. It's like three hundred dollars. No, <laughs> DX7. Yeah. yeah. No, I heard DX7s are like well, no, they, we, way higher. You, you can get one for between three and five hundred dollars. What? Yeah. They used to be way higher than that when I was like there's, looking them up. Million, I haven't looked them up. There's a million recently. of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. It does depend on the model. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I'm more so, realistic than uh, yeah. You, 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 I can, dream parents. Can parents. <laughs> dream studio. <laughs> dream <laughs> studio. I'm like, hey. He's a simple guy. I'm a simple man. I'm a simple. I don't know. In terms of like dream. Dream Dream Gear though, like, yeah, I, I'm pretty. I don't know. That that would probably be the range of where I would want to like. What about grab. like speakers though? Like Dream Speakers. Dream Speakers would be the ADMs, or mm. like even higher the um the big ones, the PMCs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those those big wall yeah. speakers like oh, yeah. that would be. Yeah. yeah. That would be money. Like yeah, yeah, but for synths and stuff like, I'm pretty. Good. I, I mean, you want I a know, DX7 and a K2000. I can, I can make, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I can make stuff like that to yeah. you, you know? Yeah. I, I learned Reactor and stuff. Yeah. Like, so I can replicate like, it. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, yeah not even the replica. Just make a completely different new That's true. ad system, yeah. all that stuff. I'm more into making that type of thing than like. I'm just gonna get you trying to get FM8 it. for Christmas and you'll be fine. Like, <laughs> download all those patches, you'll be good. <laughs> Um, I'm good. I, I for me. Liam, Liam, what would, what would your dream dream kit be? Um, I would say I have three, like as well. So it'd be like the uh, 808, the big modular system that have a National Music Center. Which one? The Toto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tonto. Tonto. The Tonto. Tonto. Sorry. Tonto. I'd want that's, that. That'd that's be... a dream piece. Yeah. Here, yeah. Right? I knew, There's I one knew... in the whole world. Yeah. yeah. That's a dream piece. Yes. Um. Or the Atom Eight speakers, and those are just like on the speaker side. So. Yeah, yeah. Because they're they're so clear. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about you? Uh, Oberheim Matrix Twelve. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Bingo. That's what I would yeah. want. Yeah. Deadly. I would. 
it would, I would never figure out how to <laughs> mo modulate everything with every single other thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I want an Oberheim. Mm -hmm. That's the one I would really like. Yeah. yeah. But I'll I'll do with my Arturia version of it for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Well, that's that's cool. that's about what I had lined up for today. Is yeah. there is there anything else that you guys might want to talk about to to end the show off? Just <laughs> Experiences you may have had, um, you know, tips tips for the young guys out there who are um, just getting started. Mm. I'd say the biggest thing is like not what you have, but like because you already have it. It's like what you make. Yeah. So like, don't mm -hmm. worry about like what you got. Yeah, it is what you make it. Yeah. It, it, it is easy to get caught up. I know for myself, I, I get, and for Gabe too, we have the, what do you call it, gas? Gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I, I'm over it. I've, I've been safe for <clears throat> clean for seven months. I, that, <laughs> that's not so bad. <laughs> Me too. I stopped. I actually sold a synth on Monday. So oh, yeah. I am go. downsizing now. Yeah, yeah um, totally. But yeah, you don't you don't need nine million things. You can have nine million things, and it. I I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I just go into our studio and I just open the door and I go, cool. And I just yeah, shut the door yeah, and yeah, just yeah. go in. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. totally. It's almost like my little museum at this point. Yeah, of it's great. Stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't. Yeah. Just because you're getting yeah. more doesn't mean you're gonna be making more. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because totally. there's tons of forums with a bunch of gearheads. That haven't yeah. put out a track a day in their life, but they know about every single yeah. specification for every single yeah. synth. And I so, think, yeah. I think, I think okay, an interesting tip might be yes. once you have, you know, your, your basics, you know, maybe you got a computer, a sound card, some speakers, you should make a song before you start buying other stuff. And then you buy something, maybe, and then you need to make a song with that. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you need so to finish something. Exactly. Like, yeah. tack, like to tack on what you're saying, like... yeah. Learn that piece of gear. That's yeah. what I learned from like a lot of techno producers. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, they buy a piece of gear and then master that gear. Yeah, master it to the point to where you're like making records that have that sound. I don't care if it's a compressor. Yeah. I don't care if it's an EQ. Yeah. It could be another synth. It could just be something that will make your sound yeah. warmer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like learn how to use that yeah. and then buy another piece of gear. Yeah, and but because I'm gonna you, try to take this. In. What's up? I'm gonna try to take this advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so but yeah, I was gonna say like the the gear that I've kept that I haven't sold is the gear that I've used in my song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's stuff I bought that I'm just like, you totally. know what? I, I like it. It was fun to you know fiddle around with, but didn't make anything with it. So. Or even if you get to the yeah. point to where you use it so much, it's like cool. I don't need this anymore. That's what yeah. I yeah. I sold yeah. my monotrons that way. Like yeah. I had the delay and the um the duo, mm -hmm. and nice. I made tons of tracks off of that and I was like oh this is cool and I mastered it to a point I was like well I made a whole little folder yeah. of things of sounds and I'm so like to the next cool thing. I'm gonna sell these I mean, yeah. someone else can use them you know what I mean exactly so yeah, yeah. That, that's cool that's that's great advice mm -hmm. um, l master your gear as yeah. much as you can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then just you know yeah or buy a piece master it get another piece master yeah. it well, so on and so forth you know you know what's funny about that is the only, really, the only, like, I haven't been making music in our studio for a while, and I took my Poly 800, and uh, I have a DP5 rack reverb, mm -hmm. and that's all I have in my room, and that's all I've been using to make music oh, yeah. in my room. I have all this other stuff in our studio, which is very close to my apartment, but I've just size down to I have right two there. things yeah. this is it I have mm -hmm. one keyboard I have one synth I have one effect yeah. I have Ableton that's all I'm using right yeah. now yep. because it got a little overwhelming for me to go in the studio and go yeah. what do where I do I start everything. what am I gonna turn on what am oh, I gonna I'm play sad. with today yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah sometimes having too many things too is like it's tiring to just get all the cables patched up and running okay what is this where's this going and I, I, can, ha I yeah. have everything set up though. Yeah, <laughs> I can say though. Thing. I can <laughs> say though in that studio, I've had some moments where I'm like, okay, I want to get this synth to work. Or I want to get this MIDI to work, and I've spent like 20, 30 minutes yeah, like yeah. getting the MIDI to like 
you know, to work with the program that I'm using, yeah. um, which is fine because that's actually a learning experience for me. So the next time I go in, I'm like, boom, 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 yeah. done. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't have to worry about it so much. But yeah, that's like, yeah, sometimes you're just like, I just want to sit down and write this tune. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to be Try limited. Write this tune. Yeah. I don't, don't want to have, um, I think of, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have been, have you seen Junkie XL's videos on YouTube of his studio and him yeah. just going mm -hmm. through his dream studio of every synth sure. ever? Yeah. Um, but like thinking about going in there and trying to, I'm gonna make music today. It's like, what are you? Yeah. Even so gonna where do you start? <laughs> yeah. What do you turn on? Like, yeah. what do you even do? Totally, totally. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I think um, one other thing too is like to be fluid with where you are and like how you work um, because sometimes you just may not have that space. Um, yeah. yeah, or you like for instance for me, I pretty much packed up my stuff and left my monitors yeah. and my mixer and my synths, all that stuff mm -hmm. back in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. kind of started over mm -hmm. in a sense. Um, yeah, but like for me, you know, I'm able to, I was able to kind of utilize what I was, what I had. So mm -hmm. I had my headphones, I yeah. had like some keyboards and stuff like that to kind of mess with. And yeah. yeah, I pretty much go from there. So yeah, sometimes you might have it, sometimes you might not. And you might be on the road and you might have, be influenced by something. But if you're still attached to, you know, your gear and wanting to go back to the studio, you might just be sitting there like, okay, how do I write this? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 So yeah, try to be like fluid when you're, mm -hmm. it helps with productivity a lot. Cause sometimes like I'll leave or I'll like sit on the couch and work on a tune. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or I'll like sit at my desk and work yeah. on a tune or I'll just go over to the studio and work on a tune. Yeah. yeah. So it all depends. Yeah. Sometimes if you change your scenario, you might come up with different results. So, totally. Yeah. 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 Try to be fluid with that. I yeah, think. yeah. 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 And, one. and don't feel, I guess, uh, Speaking to that and to what I was saying earlier is I almost felt guilty about going out of my studio because I was like, I've created this space. It's supposed to be where I feel comfortable making music. Totally. And it was like just for that, for this little bit, it's like I don't feel comfortable in here right now. So I'm going to go to my other space. And yeah. it was like, oh, I can yeah. make music in here. Yeah. Yeah, and I had to get over the fact that it was, I'm like, this is okay. Yeah. It's okay that I want to make music here right now. Yeah. And I don't want to make music there right but now. But the fact that you have the option yes. is like... That's very lucky. It's very great. privileged. And it's, yeah, it's, it's very, a, it's, very, it's, very it's, lucky. It's yeah, awesome. Sure. So like, yeah, but sometimes, you know, you may not have that option or whatever. Totally. So, you're on yeah. a plane. You're on a train. You're with the mouse. You're in a you're house. house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's important. To yeah. Just, um, yeah, just, just know that, yeah. Totally. Just be fluid. Yeah. Cool. Just be fluid. Any any other closing comments before we uh, end today's uh, wonderful friendship chat? <laughs> I, I think I think one more important thing that hasn't been touched on yet is the importance for myself anyhow to keep the studio clean and tidy. Ooh, one hundred percent. Yeah, nailed yeah. it. Yeah, whenever yeah. whenever my studio is all cluttered and I have like coffee cups yeah. all over the place. Uh, I, I feel like my music reflects that. You can and you can hear that in your workflow and in, mm -hmm. and in what you're making in the creative space. So keep mm -hmm. it tidy, keep it clean. Your tracks will come out that way. That's that's how I feel anyway. There's there's a big juxtaposition that I always hold in my mind. Um, well, recently at least because I've seen these videos recently, and it's of um, the guy who produced uh, Childish Gambino's last record. Yeah. I think he's Swedish. Okay. I don't remember. But his studio, I was watching the video, and he's like, oh, this is my gear, and da-da-da-da-da. And all I could think of was, that is the cleanest studio I've ever seen. It's so <laughs> yeah. beautiful. And there's, like, no, he has his shoes, he's in bare feet. Yeah. It's, like, shoes off. It's carpet. Wow. And it was just so immaculate and beautiful. And then the opposite of that is, I think it's Ono. He's a, a hip hop producer oh, from yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah. His uh, digging in the in the carts. Or, yeah, yeah. Or what, what's digging the, in the crates? crates. No, no, no. <laughs> the carts because he's or is it? It is crates, mm -hmm. but he uses N sixty four games. Oh, so yeah. And his studio is like 
the, there's an old keyboard and it just has cigarettes put out <laughs> on it and it's like there's part of a <clears throat> piano keyboard sticking out from underneath the desk but only part of it so he's like trying to pull it out and going oh like this gosh. and it's just the filthiest dirty it looks like a rat hole it's so gross and I've had those two those two studio spaces juxta juxtaposition in my brain. Like, they say disorganization is destructive genius. So. That's the other thing. Mm. For some people, <laughs> that that's the counterpoint yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but I, I am, uh, yeah, I, I'm with you, Sean, on that. It's yeah. Just like, just keep everything clean and tidy and at least somewhat organized to where you know where everything is. Or yeah. if you bring someone else in, they can just be like, you can be like, okay, use that keyboard there, yeah. use that keyboard there. It's totally. not like, oh, sorry about my keyboard. <laughs> yeah. Or like getting the cigarette butts off of it, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, like, smoking. Yeah. Don't smoke in your studio, it's gross. Yeah. Well, I also yeah. think it depends on like what kind of producer you are. Like if it's bothering you while you're making a beat, just clean your studio. Yeah. Like, but if it's not and you're like the kind of person that like is okay with being disorganized with like not vacuuming, then that's fine. Like I think yeah. that's just yeah. like two yeah. separate Yeah. Make sure it's comfortable for you. Cleanliness, I agree, like for myself. I, I like that. Yeah. I like a clean space but like if you're like oh no and you want to smoke in there and everything's a mess and that helps you in some way mm -hmm. then i mean smoke more in your studio yeah. but i, I wouldn't like, recommend it personally yeah <laughs> i make I, sure I, oh it's okay i used to defend myself uh by something that i remember hearing that picasso studio was apparently like a giant mess yes mm -hmm. he made the most brilliant yeah that's complete bull yeah he hey, was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty clean yeah mm -hmm. it was pretty clean yeah, <laughs> we'll get that. We'll get that. Whoever came up with that rumor must have just caught him at a bad time. Yeah. So, so you can't use that anymore. That doesn't. Uh, mm. Doesn't. Work it's anymore. not an excuse. No yeah. excuses anymore. You're not Picasso. Yeah. You're not Picasso. <laughs> yeah. On, on that note, you're not Picasso. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you can be if you try hard enough. If you try hard enough. Um, so I be think yourself. I be yourself. Yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. <laughs> See, so I think. I like... think. Uh, I think we'll end the podcast there. Yeah. Thank you guys very much for joining me today. Um, I appreciate your time and uh, your insights. Totally. And I hope everybody else does as well. Uh, and we'll be back next week. Yeah. RP Craig Mac. Bye. Bye. RP Matt Dyke.